weather, changing from day to day, sometimes from hour to hour. And when it changes, we may have to change our plans, because our plans often depend on the weather. Weather is the condition of the air around us. The air may be cold or warm, dry or moist, We need different kinds of weather to get our work done. Just enough sun and rain for the farmer's crops. Clear skies for fishermen and sailors. For truck drivers and pilots. But a change to bad weather makes it hard to get work done. Bad weather can destroy property upset schedules and cause hardship. Make safety precautions necessary. When we can tell how the weather may change, we can plan ahead. First, let's see why the weather changes. The sun plays a big part in causing these changes. In the tropics, the sun's rays strike the earth directly and make it hot. In the polar regions, the rays strike the earth at a slant and cover more land, not heating it as much. Since less heat from the sun's rays reach the polar regions, air masses over them are chilled, especially in winter. Then they flow southward near the Earth's surface, a cold, heavy wedge of air. Air masses heated by tropical regions become warm, moist, and light. These rise and flow north. Wherever warm and cold air masses meet, a front is formed. Clouds, rain, or snow occur along these fronts as they move eastward across the nation. This is where our weather begins. As large air masses flow over the earth, they are affected by conditions such as mountains or large bodies of water. Meanwhile, moisture keeps going into the air from plants and soil, lakes, streams, rivers, and oceans. Moisture heated by the sun evaporating into the air the rising water vapor is cooled and changes back into tiny drops of water that make clouds. What's the weather like today? The changing shapes of clouds help tell us. These are the main cloud types. Cirrus, the wispy ones floating as high up as five miles, so high that their moisture has cooled into tiny ice crystals. Cumulus, white and puffy. When these rise higher, Larger and larger drops form, and the clouds pile up into thunderheads. They usually mean one thing, rain. Fog. It too is a cloud, only it's a cloud at the ground. Fog sometimes lifts and forms stratus, low-lying, thin, gray clouds without much form. Other kinds of clouds are combinations of cirrus, cumulus, or stratus clouds. All clouds are an indication of moisture in the air. But moisture in the air also forms as dew, frost, and snow. Dew may be formed at the close of a warm summer day. The soil, buildings, and plants cool off. Water vapor in the warm air touches the cooler ground and plants. The vapor condenses into droplets of dew. But sometimes at night, in the fall and spring, the temperature drops below freezing. Then the water vapor changes directly into frost instead of dew. Fruit farmers fight to protect their crops from frost with heat from burners. When this happens, it's a race between weather and man. 
In winter, when the air is very cold, vapor carried up by rising air condenses directly into snowflakes. No two are ever alike. snow like a blanket on the earth, protecting plants from the freezing air. What will the weather be tomorrow? Every day across the nation, observers at weather stations study and record weather conditions. Observers begin by noting the height, type, and movement of the clouds. They check the hygrograph, which measures humidity, the amount of moisture in the air. Wet and dry bulb thermometers also measure humidity. Other types of thermometers are used to measure the highest and lowest temperature each day. Mercury and aneroid barometers are used to measure the air pressure. Cold air is heavier than warm air. The barometer is usually higher in cold weather. The speed of the wind is measured by the whirling cups of an instrument called the anemometer. The stronger the wind, the faster the anemometer cups turn around. Weather vanes show wind direction. The direction and speed of storm areas are located by radar. Each station reports on storms in its area. These are all pinpointed on large maps of special interest to pilots. The instruments we've seen so far measure conditions near the ground. Conditions in the upper air are measured by this device called a radio sonde. Carried aloft by a balloon, the radio sonde contains instruments to measure temperature, pressure, and humidity. As the balloon rises, a built-in radio set transmits the temperature, pressure, and humidity at different levels to the station below. All these weather conditions, measured on the ground and aloft at hundreds of observation stations, both civilian and military, arrive in a steady flow at central forecasting offices in our major cities. The forecaster will now try to figure out the movement of the air masses and tell what will happen along the fronts where the different air masses meet. Here, the conditions observed at the same time across the nation are recorded on a large map of the United States. This overall view locates the areas of high and low pressure. Long-range forecast maps prepared by the Central Weather Bureau in Washington, D.C. are received at these main forecast offices. Finally, teams of experts study the movement of the masses of air. On the basis of past experience, they can now predict what will happen as the different air masses move across the nation and what changes are most likely to occur. For large areas, the forecasts are right a very large part of the time. Day and night, the forecasts go out to the people who need them. Farmers, fishermen, pilots, forecasts you read each day in your newspaper and see on television. All the observation, measurement, and analysis we have seen are necessary to give us this forecast. This is the way it looked today across the nation. There was rain in the Pacific Northwest, the sun was shining down in the Southwest, and uh, polar air from Canada was spilling down over the Great Plains states, pushing rain and snow ahead of it. Right now, the leading edge of that cold air runs from Lake Superior down through Nebraska, up along the Rocky Mountains, back to Canada. And here at Minot, North Dakota, where the high pressure center is located, and that's really the center of this cold air mass, it was 10 below zero and clear. Here at La Crosse, Wisconsin, where the front has just passed, it's only 30 degrees, while at Madison, Wisconsin, out ahead of the front and only uh, 100 miles from La Crosse, it's 60. Now this polar air is moving southeast at 30 miles an hour, so let's see how this will affect changes in the weather tomorrow in the Great Lakes area. The cold front is pushing through Wisconsin, with southerly wind ahead of it and northerly wind behind it. And this cold air is forcing this warm, moist air to give up its moisture and then as snow as it gets colder. And so it goes every day, every night, every season. A parade of the elements. Sun, frost, snow, rain. 
affecting the things we do, our work, our play, our health. Changes in the air around us, causing our weather to change. Weather changes that affect us all.